that thing there. Your ex can't so beside for that thing there. Two, one, two. Good night. Good night, St. Martin, of course. Welcome to your favorite online internet program, www.sxmtalk.com. Live and serious radio discussion starts here. Let me welcome everyone who's listening. Call up a friend, call up someone, tell them log on. Because um, we'll be discussing some good points tonight. And I'll also be getting into some serious discussions as to why things are not changing in our community. Why things are not changing in our country because of the type of investors that we attract to this country. And it's across the board. But before I get into that, I would like to um, send out my condolences to a very, very good friend of mine, like a brother, uh, the Barclay family, Michael Barclay, Donald Barclay, those individuals, they lost their mom, Hila, ba Hila Lando Ford, she'll be burying tomorrow, it was like a mother to me. So, um, I'm so on behalf of SXM Talk, I'm sending out my heartfelt condolences to the family and friends of the late Hilda Landerford. May you rest in peace. But good night to everyone. I gotta send a special big up to my girl, Apolina Violinas. Apo, good night to you. I know I promised to give you a call, but I just keep getting caught up. This is a young lady that have the website SXM Melee, which I encourage a lot of people to go and check out. A young St. Martin studying. And um, there's where you can get all the information you want, especially for students. So it's a very good website. But everyone, good night. And we're going to get right into the program. Seeing that I have been on Telem case for what I deemed illegal as to them charging you extra when they clearly, clearly advertise a figure but charging you something else different. I've been on Telem case so often. And because of that, I've received a lot of messages, a lot of calls saying, Chris, what about cable TV? Because cable TV is doing the same thing. The reason why it took me a while to get to cable TV is simply because of research. I needed to get information I needed to see exactly what is it cable TV was doing. Now, I have some information here that I'm going to read because now I'm still, I'm still waiting on the final information on cable TV. But I want, to, I want to show you something because many people are saying, what about cable TV, what about cable TV? You remember one time I read this document that came from the tax department, St. Martin. This document. Tax department, St. Martin, announcement. You can get this at the tax inspectorate in the vineyard building. They have it stick up on the bulletin board. Accountants are supposed to have this also. I'm going to read it because I read it one time, so I'm going to read it again. The reason why I'm doing that is to show... The difference between Telem and cable TV. Let me read this. The tax department, by means of this communique, wishes to provide clarity on the following issues. It goes to say, since the implementation of the turnover tax, it has been a point of discussion whether the turnover tax should be stated separately on the bill, invoice, or receipt. The turnover tax is an indirect tax with a character of a consumption tax. Therefore, the turnover tax is supposed to be included in the prices. 
This is the part that I want you guys to pay attention to because we're going to come back to it. For this reason, the turnover tax should not be stated separately on the bill, invoice, or receipt. Based on the intent of the law, the former inspector of taxes informed the various businesses that turnover tax should not be stated separately on the bill, invoice, or receipt. By way of a ministerial regulation, the placement of the turnover tax separately on the bill, invoice, or receipt will be considered a punishable offense and will be punished with a fine of maximum 5,000 guilders per bill, invoice, or receipt. Pending the publication and implementation of the ministerial regulation, the tax department wishes to caution the businesses to start making the necessary adjustment to their administration management. Now, we're going to come back to this part where it say the turnover tax is an indirect tax with character of a consumption tax. Therefore, the turnover tax is supposed to be included in the prices. This is not what I am saying. This is what the tax department of St. Martin is saying. Why am I being so specific about this? Why am I stressing on this? It's because it is easy to come and attack a company, beat them up for what you deem is wrong. Now, this is why I posted a topic, cable TV and the turnover tax. Is it illegal or not? Because when I read, now what I did, I got a copy of a receipt from cable TV. I would like to show it, but I didn't block out the account number and stuff like that. So I'm not going to show it, but it have paid, date, and stamp and everything on it. It also have disconnection of cable TV services takes place on the 5th of every month. But there's something on the receipt I want to read. And it goes like this. Government charge 3% TOT included in the monthly amount. So everybody is saying, Christopher, cable TV is doing the same thing. Cable TV is doing the same thing. Why are you not talking about cable TV? But when I did my research and I asked a few questions, let us compare the two. Listen to what it says. Government charge 3% turnover tax included. That's the word. Included in monthly amount. Let's go back over to the communique. It says the turnover tax is an indirect tax with a character of a consumption tax. This is a part. Therefore, the turnover tax is supposed to be included in the prices. No. Yeah, I'm not an accountant. I'm not a finance man. But I can read. And when I compare the two, the, the two literature, the two writings, I, I am not in a position to say that cable TV is right in what they are doing. Nor am I in a position to say that cable TV is wrong in what they are doing. But when I look at the two, cable TV is saying the turnover tax is included in the monthly amount. When I look at the communique from the tax department, it is saying the turnover tax is supposed to be included in the prices. Now, that is a clear difference when tell him clear difference tell him is not advertising turnover tax nothing whatsoever what tell him is doing is adding extra on the cost of a price that is advertised now <laughs> people can say i gotta give tell him a break eh? but to tell you how far i'm going with tell him there's a law there's a Dutch law that talks about false advertising. I have my people and them working on it. 
because I'm going to come here with it. Now, my Dutch in 100%, but I'm going to try my best to sprachel the Netherlands. Begrijp je? So that you can understand exactly what this law says. Because what Telem is doing is false advertising. You cannot tell me that something is $49.95 and then you have administrative costs and other charges. I don't have to pay your administrative costs. But tonight is not about Telem. It's about the issue of cable TV and the turnover tax. Now, I didn't get to see the whole receipt. What I am reading from is a stub. Because I don't have cable TV. I never had cable TV. So I got the book from an individual. And they showed me that they said that cable TV does give you a booklet. And when you have to pay, they just tear off the stub. Or tear off a piece. And you keep the stub in the booklet. And they go with the piece that they tore off. And that's what it's saying here. Government charge 3%. Turnover tax included in the monthly amount. I go back to the communique. Therefore, the turnover tax is supposed to be included in the prices. Now, I stand to be corrected on this issue. I don't want no one go and say Christopher is on cable TV side or anything like that. But by reading this, both of them, I am assuming, and I want you to understand the words that I'm using, I am assuming that cable TV is in the right as to what they're doing. But, of course, Christopher is not going to leave it there. I'm going to get some advice from the finance minister as to what he thinks about both of them okay but when I read the two so everyone out there who keep who kept on saying Christopher what about cable TV what about cable TV when I look at it I can't say that what cable TV is doing is wrong okay now I want to I want to get into this issue and I know a lot of people can get upset with me. Maybe even um, a political leader might get upset with me. But because of, because of these type of investors and people that come to this country have us a bit stagnated. What am I talking about? Now, I'm just going on what the newspapers are going by. Okay? I don't know how many of you guys read it today. But it was bold in the newspaper. It was on the front page. It says, Atlantis casino owner denies all accusations. What is he talking about? Well, there have been a warrant for his arrest by the Italian police. They have a warrant out for Francesco. Who is Francesco? Francesco is the operator of Atlantis Casino here in St. Martin. But I just want to read, right, a piece, what the newspapers have to say. And the reason why I'm doing this is how our country, St. Martin, does bend over backwards to accommodate these type of unscrupulous investors. This is the reason why the casino industry in St. Martin owed the government $25 million in taxes. But when you owe them a little 5000 okay, a 3000 a couple of hundred guilders, they place a lien on your salary. They send in door to Arden for you. Tall boy can come knocking on your door. Okay? They want you paid off in three days. That's what is happening to you and I. 
when we can't pay our taxes, when we fall back on our taxes. Lord God, they're all over us. But let me read this. Francesco Carello, widely considered to be the real owner of Atlantis Casino in Kupakoi, vehemently denied over the weekend accusations brought against him by the Italian tax authorities. International news agency Rutgers reported early last week that the Italian tax police has issued an arrest warrant against Carrello. He is suspected of corruption in connection with a loan of 148 million euros from the Italian banker Populaire di Milano. BPM to the casino chain Atlantis BP. According to Rutgers, Milan prosecutors suspect that huge loans were granted partly through the falsification of evaluation procedures at the bank and given an exchange let me find the other page. You see, this is what goes on here. These are the kind of people that we have here. Right? Given an exchange of 5.7 million euros. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen. This is the St. Martin part. Right? This is why these people and them could come here, do what they want because our politicians are in their pocket. This is the St. Martin part. 5.7 million euros in bribes. A police statement said on Tuesday when the investigation led to searches at the BPM chairman Massimo Massimo Ponzilini offices and residents last November investigative sources said the the loans included one worth 148 million euros given to the gaming company Atlantis BP B Plus after it won a contract. Sorry. Yeah. After it won a contract from state gaming body AAMS back in 2004, Ruthers added. Now, I don't want to, to go in all the. Uh, the details and going this and going that and all kind of stuff like that. But you know what? You know what is so funny? These people exist in St. Martin. They exist in St. Martin. Atlantis Casinos in St. Martin is in Curacao. Is in a number of countries throughout the world. However, they are stationed here in St. Martin. These are the kind of people that come to this country. These are the kind of people that our government and our politicians bend over backwards to accommodate. In the name of so-called giving jobs, casino jobs. All right? I mean, no wonder. No wonder, right, we are, we are being looked at as suspect in the world. You remember we was on the list of money laundering? Remember that? This is what goes on in this country. But the casinos on St. Martin owe the government of St. Martin 25 million in taxes. 25 million in taxes. But you owe them a thousand guilders, no? You owe them. So, I mean, somewhere, someone is not doing their jobs. Somewhere, someone is not doing their jobs. All right? I am saying that when we have these sort of people being investigated all over the world, St. Martin need to bring the hammer down on them, send them out of the country, 
persona non grata, step in as government with balls, seize all their assets, property in the name of country, St. Martin, okay, like what they did in Antigua with a gentleman who was charged in a Ponzi scheme, Stanford, Antigua seized everything. St. Martin need to grow some balls. Because we cannot have these people coming to this island and embarrassing us like this on the international market. In the international, in the eyes of the international world. Because we will become a haven for only crooked investors. And St. Martin will become a haven investors. Oh no, no, I am going to St. Martin. If you want to invest crookedly in St. Martin, if you want to buy the government in St. Martin, if you want to get what you want, go to St. Martin. Because that is what they are known for. But you see, he, he, he finances everyone's campaign. He throws money across the board to everyone. So none of them don't got the balls to stand up and say, listen, partner, you got 24 hours to leave this island. 24 hours to leave, leave this island. Suddenly a case abroad, and then we could possibly talk about having you come back here to conduct your business. But right now, we don't want you here. And let me explain to you why I'm saying that. They catch a little fellow down the road with a five bag, and the United States want him for drug trafficking. We can extradite him one time. One time he's going to be extradited because of a relationship we have in the United States. He may not be trafficking drugs, but he's evading taxes, and that's a crime. We don't need these kind of people in St. Martin. Yes, I'm saying it. Because if they don't got balls, I got some big ones. It is time St. Martin put the foot down on these crooked, corrupt, unscrupulous type of investors that come to this country. St. Martin, stop it. Stop selling out your country because these people don't got a dollar. Where there's one casino boss, there's another. There are dimes a dozen. You can find them all over the world. We can find them all over the world to come to St. Martin and do business here. But when they start to bring down the good name of St. Martin, we need to guard against that. We need to take care of our sovereignty. Secure our name. In the standing of the international world. We can't have these kind of people in them being searched for and looked at international warrant. And they are located here in St. Martin. What is that saying about St. Martin? What is that saying about St. Martin? All the names with us already here about St. Martin. It's a corrupt island. You can do what you want. Money laundering. Drug trafficking. A haven for this, a haven for that. That is what we are becoming. That is what we are starting to be known for. Because we accept the bribes and the monies from these type of people because of a campaign. So then the question is, what's the difference? What's the difference between the political parties if all of them is taking the money from them? What's the difference in terms of ideology? What's the difference? We need to go back to basics. And start dealing with the people in the country. And the people in this country, we need you guys to have some pride and dignity. Stop the gimme gimme and the wanting wanting and the begging begging. Stop it. Because of the demand, there have to be a supply. We need to vote for individuals on their merits and actions 
as to what they want to do for this country. That's what we need to start voting for. Listen, we seriously need a revolution in this country. A revolution in times of, of thinking, changing our thinking, doing things different, a different way of thinking, a renaissance of thinking, if I should call it this way, a rebirth of thinking, an evolution of intellectual minds of doing things differently. We can't rely on the, on the older generation because they have already set in their ways. You see? But I want to see this country reach to a stage or a state to where people are smart and educated and wise enough to vote for a program and a philosophy based on loyalty to the people. Now, this may sound utopic, but look at it good. Look at the impediments in this country, the stumbling blocks, the hurdles, the Jericho walls that are keeping us back. Look at it. And it's ourselves because we demand a certain level of mediocrity from our politicians and they are supply it to us. We must come to an understanding where we say, look, listen, your low, cheesy crap is not conducive to the evolution of me growing, of me expanding, of me reaching to a state that I aspire in my vision. We must come to that stage. You know, you know what I realized on St. Martin? Everyone would come to the parliament building. Everyone would come to you and talk to you and what they want. I want a job. I'm looking for a job. I need a job. And you're constantly here I want, I want, I want, I want, I need, I need, I need. But you never, nine out of ten, or nine and a half out of ten, out of ten, everybody that comes says, I want, I want, I want, I want, I need, I need, I need. Hardly, vaguely, inconsistently, would you hear individuals say, I want to create. Help me and show me how to create jobs. Because you see, and let me tie it into this also and send out congratulations to the Parliament of St. Martin on the Bill of Emancipation today. Congratulations to the Parliament of St. Martin, all the members. I also want to say thumbs up and congratulations to the former Minister of Education, Sports, Culture, and Youth Affairs, the Honorable Minister Rhoda Arundel, for taking this issue and hammering it home, preparing the document, preparing the work that the new minister now today, the Honorable Minister Sylvia Jacobs, said that there was nothing much to add and came to parliament for its ratification to see that July 1st becomes not just a holiday but a recognition as to what our foreparents, forefathers went through to where we are today. But I can say, I can say this. So I'm sending out congratulations to the former Minister of Education, Culture, Sports and Youth Affair, the Honorable Minister Roland Arundel, thumbs up. Thank you very much, Minister, for encouraging us in terms of seeing our right, like what the Honorable Member of Parliament, Dr. Larry Richardson, said today, it is overdue. I also want to thank the now, the now Minister, Sylvia Jacobs, okay, for not being bashful, for not being revengeful, 
for not being egotistical, for not being a, a, a Goliath, but was humbled and used judgment and wisdom to bring it to parliament. So basically it was handed down to her and gracefully she accepted the document and she took it to parliament. Congratulations, minister. These are the type of politicians that St. Martin need to keep their eye on. The ones who don't thumb their chest. Me, I is the big fish. I is the big one here and everybody else is small fries. I feed in them. You see those kind? Those is the kind we got to rebuke. When they talk about they coming back with a vengeance. Those are the kinds we don't need in St. Martin. We don't need them in St. Martin. We don't want them here in St. Martin. And you need to send that resounding message when you go to the polls. You are not good for this country. But anyway, I don't want to drift off. Again, congratulations to Parliament of St. Martin. Congratulations to both former and present Minister of Culture, Youth Affairs and Sports. And by large and extension, congratulations to the people of St. Martin. Now, with that being said though, right, I would want to believe that later on in our growing process, we're going to call for more. Now that we have acknowledged Emancipation Day, July 1st, as a struggle, and is long overdue, we need to start pointing our fingers to Europe, Holland and France, asking for reparations and an apology. That's the next step. And then, in our evolution next to that, is independence by 2020. But let me backtrack. Let me backtrack and go back to the part where I keep saying that everybody that comes says, um, I want, 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 I want. And no one is saying, I want to create, I need to create, it's time to create, it's time to create. You're not hearing that. Because in our minds, we have been fed hogwash garbage and dribble juice over the years in our educational process where we have become economical slaves so we have moved from being physical slaves to mental enslavement and now to economical slaves because what has happened is a transition, is a change where they used labor to create wealth for themselves and fear in the one working. Then what they use after is the mine. They confuse the mind. You too black. Your nose too big. Your hair nappy. You're ugly. So they confuse the mind. Christopher Columbus discover. And those books are still in our schools today. Now, if that is not one of the biggest fabrication of lies in the history of Caribbean people in the Western world, I don't know what is. How in the world, in God's name, can you discover something when you already met people there? And what freaks me out is our intellectuals preach the same thing. You stand up today and say that we need these books out of our schools, Macmillan and Max Mel, go and look at you and say, why were you talking about? These are the authors of those books. A Caribbean history. The slave trade in the Caribbean. 
the transatlantic slave trade i know because i did history in school and those are the books that we used and they tell you about christopher columbus the caribs and the arawaks but they never told you they never told you about we being kings and queens in africa Timbuktu being the gem and the pearl of the world with spices. Kemet, the dawn of creation of the Nile. How trips was being made already long before preceded Columbus times. How you think? Think about it. Think about it. If that is the case, that Christopher Columbus discovered when America the Vespucci, and he's the one who the so-called said discover America, that's why you get the name America from Amerigo the Vespucci. He was a navigator for Christopher Columbus and the Nina. And we also we also had Sir Sir Sir, um, Sir Riley Walter and Sir Drakes went into Mexico when they met the Aztecs, the Mayas. Okay? The civilization had them baffled. But that's not the point I want to get at. How do you think pyramids get in South America? If pyramid is an African creation, an African invention, how do you think they got in South America? But anyway, that's going a little too deep in history. I want to get back to the point of creating. Right? I want to show you how we have regressed. As much as we would have Dr. Anders and doctors and PhDs and all sorts of things like that. Right? Imagine our ancestors was bound in chains and whipped to work and slaves. New, new, illiterate as best can't read, can't write, but verse in the land, verse in herbal medicine, knew that the one cent they get for labor, they would save and save and save and save and save, that when the time came, they had enough saved to buy the land that they labored and slaved on. That today, we see large families on St. Martin, renowned families, recognized families like the Bells, the James, the Richardsons. Okay? And I can go on. And we also have, we also have the Marsa children, like the Bubba Twees. Okay? And I can go on that occup and Flemings occupy large sum of land on St. Martin. It's because of their ancestors. I mean, there was the creators at a time back. The big, big pots they had on rock, they would turn and turn and turn to make soup and sell, to make the little monies. But today we forget all of that. We are just simply dependent on a salary. So we have become slaves to a salary. But what they tell us is not slave to a salary, it's security. That's what they call us, security. And you pay into a pension plan so that when you retire, you have this money, 400 guilders. Something is wrong. Something is wrong, my people. We are smarter, wiser, and greater than this sort of belittlement that we continue to take. I want to send, I want to send a message to our leaders, especially my leader. I know I may get a flack for this, but I'm going to say it still. It is time to
to recognize the individuals around you that are capable, suitable, effective, qualified, and well-rounded to hold certain positions in this country that not only want a chance, but deserve a fair and equal opportunity to hold certain positions in this country. There's a wicked, nasty thing going on at Telem, where the workers of Telem are being sidelined side and treated reduced to paupers, reduced to insignificant beings after working in a company for 10, 12, 15, and 20 years. Build Telem, build Telcel. That today, you have individuals in management position like Helma, like Mingo, and for God knows why I could never remember that other gentleman's name, okay? Simply because they can. And, and you know, it, 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 it upsets me. Only because they can do it. They are bullying. Bullying. The workers of Telem. Bullying. But with that being said, though, if they continue to allow themselves to be bullied, then accept what you get and take what is being offered and hush your mouth. But I want to, I want to um, stress on a statement that, that Dr. Anders Leopold James made when he was here on the program with me. When he turned to me and he said, he's disappointed in the attitude and the way of young people today. And he's absolutely correct. He's absolutely right. Because where is your resolve? Where is your fight? Where is your back? Where is your bite? Get up. Wake up. And demand your stand in this country. Start sending a clear message that you have had enough. What is wrong with us? Why are we allowing ourselves to be pacified? Living on a month-to-month -month basis, salary to salary, those things are not right in this country. $25 million, $25 million Casino and St. Martin owe this country. And we have government officials who is not doing their jobs, sending the message down to their subordinates to go and collect. If the casinos want to close, then let them close. Get some balls, St. Martin. Get some balls. Because when we fix these sort of things, what is going on in Telem wouldn't happen. What has happened down at Pelican wouldn't happen because bosses and managers would know that there's a government in this country that stands on the side of their people. But we are too nasty in this place. Too nasty. You know, let me send out. Let me send out. Um, a big up to my boy Roots. There in Miami, I think he is. In our roots, in 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 our roots and culture, we got to touch base, brother. I want one of your shirts, and I want one of those stickers you have. Let me stick it up on my walls and think I got here in the studio. 
I have another message that came in and say, what about the West End? Check how much they owe. You know? Listen. Listen. You know how far 25 million can go in this country? Rahul Elish Sports Complex wouldn't look that way. Let me, let me, let me, um, let me say something. Because I carry the dual nationality, right? Both French and Dutch. I have the opportunity to take advantage of certain things that is tabled or available for French nationals, French citizens. Now, when I came back to St. Martin, there was a there was a a project going on on the French side where young entrepreneurs between the ages of 18 and 25 and 25 right could have put a project together a proposal together an entrepreneurial proposal together and they was given funding up to 7,000 euros. Some get 8,000 euros, 4,000 euros, right? I got up to about 4,000 and change euros because of the proposal I put together where I had, um, it, was, it, was candy, it was vending candy machines. And I had a number of candy machines throughout the island. I had in Maho Casino. I had in Dolphin Casino. I had at the Mary's, now the collectivity. I had at the waterfront. And it was doing very well. However, because of demand and supply, I couldn't keep up with the supply because the supplier that I had here in St. Martin stopped coming to St. Martin. So because of that, the business was closed down. But that's not the part that I want because you learn, you learn from those sort of things. But the, 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 the point I want to reach at is that government of France through the department of Guadeloupe and St. Martin being a commune at the time put this project together. I think it was the excess of 5 million euros where young entrepreneurs got funds to start a business, whether it, whether it succeed or fail, you didn't have to pay back the money. However, you had to show progress. You had to show that things was being done. The point that I'm trying to bring here is that something was given. Something was offered to young people. What is St. Martin offering their young people in terms of entrepreneurial advancement? What? But yet we got casinos owing this island 25 million and our government can't do nothing to get that money. Yeah. Can't do nothing to get that money. What are you offering the young people? Every election is the young people. The young pe Listen to me. Listen to me, Sir Martin. Listen to me, the youth. Are oh, you better start Getting all your act together, you know. Pull up all your blinking pants from hanging all the way down under your bottom. Pull it up to your waist, tighten your belt, cut that stupidness you got on your head, bug, bug, bug your gr get it off your head, groom yourself, and start making yourself respectable in this country, you know. Because you're not going to get nowhere with your pants hanging all the way under your bottom. Ladies, get all your crazy self off of the blocks. Are you a young girl and are your head sticking up, BB? And are you talking about a bleach soap with vibes, cartel, and who going this? Stop that nonsense and that BS. All that is doing is brainwashing. Get your act together, young people. Get all your act together. Parents, don't be leaving all your sons walk out of your house with a pants like that. What's wrong with all you? Or you need a good tongue lashing too in our parents. A good tongue lashing all you need to, you know. Huh? 
Yes, I was young too. Yes. Just the other day, I remember walking out of school in academy and telling my mother, I am not going to school anymore. I could remember it vividly with tears in her eyes and her stroops. But thank God for the resem. Listen. The resem. I can't even pronounce the word. Resilience of my mom and my aunt and my grandparents, my grandmother. Thank God for those women. And that's why I said, women raised me. That she took her hard-earned money and sent me away. God rest and bless that woman today. Because Christopher was heading on a track. Yes, I had the piercings too. Yes, I got the tattoos too. Well, my bottom was always big, so I could have never wear my pants on my bottom. It could, it could, it could have never worked. Okay? But just the other day, I went to school in Trinidad, and it was just the other day, it was like that. It is 20 years ago. 20 years ago. 2013, going to make it 20 years ago, I went to Trinidad, 1992. I'm sorry, not 2013. Come this September, God spare my life, it will make it 20 years ago. 20 years ago. So parents, that child where you're looking at and saying he's going to amount to nothing, stop it. Start speaking positive things to your children. Let them know that they were kings and queens. They come from kings and queens. Let them know that they was born to do great things. Invest time in your children, not the Blackberry, not the Wii, not the computer, not the iPad. No. No. Those things, those things are mind controlling. Mind controlling. But anyway, we are down to the last couple of minutes in the program. Again, condolences go out to my brother and sister, Michael and Donald Barclay, Alisa Barclay, on the passing of their mom, Hilda Landerford. May her soul rest in eternal peace. And these things are so sad to me because you know, I am, I, am, I am tired of losing. I've lost. I've lost a lot in terms of my family and my peoples. And it takes a toll on one. On one. It makes you sad. It, it brings you down. It makes you depressed. It puts you sometimes to question. Question the works of the Creator. You know? But one of the favorite singers of mine said, look to the east for the coming of a new king. But anyway, St. Martin, I want to thank you guys for logging on tonight. I want to thank you guys for all the comments that you send, all the recommendations that you passed on. We are trying to grow what we are doing here. No one gets paid for what we are doing here. Okay? <laughs> we got a fan spinning that comes in and goes out every night. The neck of it is broken. The room is hot. We got two spotlights on a piece of two by four. Y you know? Donations are welcome. That's what my technician is behind there telling me to say. <laughs> but on a serious note, um, 
what we are doing here is creating a voice for the voiceless. Anybody could come here with their story. We don't encourage slander. We don't encourage foul language. Okay? But you want to speak. You want to vent. Come, let's talk. That's why it's called St. Martin Talk. Take care of yourself, St. Martin. Enjoy the night. God bless each and every one of you. Take care of yourself. Good night. I'm with you, my lover, lover. With you, everything is well, well. Like your love, they make my heart to do yodi yodi. Nobody can love you the way I do. I'm with you, my lover, lover. With you, everything is well, well. Like your love, they make my heart to do yodi yodi. Nobody can love you the way I do. I'm with you, my love. Same thing, same thing. Way they make me feel like say you go be my wife. Now the same thing whipping they make my friend talk say I do waste my time. Now because I respect you, girl, spend it for you every night and day.